Okay, so you're starting with a horizon line and a vanishing point. You're placing that vanishing point slightly to the left, so not quite in the middle, but to the left of the middle there. And you're drawing two lines radiating out from that point. This is going to become the road. And we're drawing a second vanishing point here. That second vanishing point is to try and get the curve in the road. So the bottom half of the road goes to point number one, and the second, the top half of the road goes to the second vanishing point. And here I'm drawing the white line on the side of the road, and it's following that same contour, that same uh, angle as the side of the road. So it's going to vanishing point one and then to vanishing point two. And I'm going in there and I'm curving those lines a little bit so they're not quite so edgy, so they don't have an elbow. They're kind of, looks like it's going around a curve, or it should. So I've actually placed the horizon line pretty high. It's an artificial horizon line. We're going to be dropping that horizon line and cropping the top part of the road so it doesn't make a triangle. And that's usually what the road looks like. It doesn't, uh, it rarely looks like a full-on triangle peak at the top. So here's the road with a dashed line. Those dashes get closer together as they go back. They also get shorter and shorter as they go back towards the vanishing point. And again, they're leading both to vanishing point one, and then as they make the curve, they changed and switched to point number two. And here's where you crop the road. So you just draw a horizontal line on top of the road, and you erase that triangle of road. It's going to look way more natural once you do that. You're then drawing in the side, the landscape, the side of the landscape, and you're grabbing some hills. Trees in there. So we're going to do a row of trees. So to start with, you're going to be drawing the trunk of the tree, and then you're going to draw the leaves on the top. So I'm making this simple. I'm doing, going to do a palm tree. You can do whatever type of tree you want. But since we're doing a row of trees, we're going to make all those trees equal in height. But because it's going um, back to that one point, it's in one point perspective, all the trees are going to get slightly smaller and closer together as they go back. So in order to get that height perfect, you use a vanishing point. And that's what I'm doing right there. I'm grabbing that vanishing point, drawing a line to the top of the tree. And then each tree after this, after that first one, will have to go to the top of that line we just drew. That's how you get the height of each tree. Make sure that your tree trunks are parallel to the edge of your paper, so they should be vertical lines. That's true of telephone poles, of fences, if you're trying to do like a wooden fence or a picket fence, you'd want to um, make sure you're doing a vertical line, not an angled line. So you can see I'm just kind of eyeballing it and making sure that each tree gets kind of skinnier and smaller as it goes back, going to the height of um, that line that I drew to indicate how tall the tree should be. And putting a little bit more detail in there, you can kind of see what's happening. And I'm fixing that one tree. And I put a little tree, a tiny tree down there, so it's almost as if it's peeking up over the, the hill. There's that crest of the hill that the road's going over. So to the right, um, I'm putting in a house. And my house is about two inches by two and a half inches for that rectangle. And it's basically the same thing as the floating cube. It's just a little bit more complex. It has some add-on stuff to it. It's going to have a roof, and it's going to have a little portico. So in order to get the roof even, you have to draw a line up from the center. That's what that center line is to tell me how, um, where to put that center line on the roof. And I'm making it a flat kind of roof. So it's angled, but then the top is it's not peaked. So the house is flat right now. I'm going to use the vanishing point and line up the sides to the vanishing point itself. And remember, you're doing all of this super light. You're not 
pressing very hard. So I'm using my ruler to line up all the edges. So there's um, multiple edges here. You just have to make sure you line up the corners. If the corner connects up to the vanishing point, then run it back there. And you can actually see that I'm not drawing my lines full back to the vanishing point. I'm doing them pretty short because I know I'm, not, I'm going to have to erase them later. So I'm making them short lines. I'm just making them as long as I think the building is going to be. And you'll save yourself some time if you do it that way. You won't have to erase as much. And your paper is going to be cleaner. So this is like kind of like a hotel or someone's house or residence on the side. I'm putting in windows and the windows that are on that left side of the building they have to go back to the vanishing point so I actually drew two parallel lines for the top and the bottom of the windows and then I divided up that, that into separate windows so it's not all one window on the front of the house on the house that's closest to us the biggest part that we're seeing those are not in perspective so you can just do regular rectangles the ones that are nearest the road on the left hand side those have to be angled to the vanishing point if you don't it's going to look visually awkward so I'm just drawing in some details on the windows I'm going to put some bushes up front and I'm going going ahead and, and drawing um, a line to that first vanishing point to get the height of the bushes so that I know that the bushes are getting smaller as they go back and bushes are fun and any type of trees is going to be fun because they're irregular, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so here I'm drawing a fence. And the line that I'm using is, or the point that I'm using is that point number one, the first point that we drew. And in order to get the fence to be right, you need to make sure that each fence post is getting successively closer and closer together as you go to the vanishing point. I'm using those little angles to try and determine when the next post is going to be. So that's why it looks like an end shape. You're drawing it at the same degree the same angle for each one and then you erase it when you're done that helps to get uh, the spacing between each fence post accurate so I'm making it into kind of a rail fence there and then I'm putting in some things just to fill up the space that's going to be a billboard And you can write whatever you want on the billboard. Um, adding things to the background helps to fill up the space, but it also gives more of a sense of depth. Like it's not just an empty landscape. It has stuff that's going on in it. So now I'm going to be putting in a semi, like um, what you did for the house. So you make a rectangle, connect the top to the vanishing point. In this case, I'm going to go to vanishing point number two. And it's like the semi is making the turn or is about to pull over. So you have the square and then you connect the top corners to the vanishing point, close it off with a parallel line. And then you get to do some fun details. So I'm putting uh, the mud flaps back there. I'm going to put in some lights just to create some more variety. When you have detail and uh, a variety of things, it makes the drawing more interesting for whoever is looking at it. So those are the tires down there. Just getting some details on the back of the truck, making it look like a real semi-truck.
And yours does not have to look exactly like this. You can alter some things about it. You can change the height of the house. You could change the semi to some a different type of car if you wanted to. But cars and things on a road would be in perspective from this angle. And then you erase the lines that you don't need. So I'm putting in a transformer in the back. Um, that transformer is bigger than or taller than any other object in the piece so far. And that's actually helping to give it a sense of space. It's good when you have a variety of different sizes, small, medium, tall. Uh, it gives, gives the viewer something more to look at and it creates more of a sense of depth. So we are going to be shading this all in. The light's going to be coming from the left-hand side. It's like the sun is setting. And you want to work on the, the same shading rules that you were working on with the blocks. You want to shade evenly, consistently. You want to make sure that your mediums are a true medium, your lights are a true light, and your darks are intense. It is important that you understand that like a white truck, like the semi that we're doing, in shadow, it's not going to be as dark as, say, a house that is has a dark color to it. So if that house that's already a dark color and is in shadow, it's going to be darker than the semi in comparison. So work on getting even shading. You can always go back in and touch things up later.